titles. Can you imagine that? But never a Firestone. He was third in 1983. Got into the PBA Hall of Fame just this week, where he deserves to be. And here's a future Hall of Famer, Bo, if there ever was one, Pete Weber. Two of the greatest bowlers on the professional bowlers tour. Obviously, Pete in the genesis years of his career, although he's been out here for six years, only 24 going against the great veteran Ron. <laughs> That to go along with his seven strikes and his victory. His 35th television appearance, Mark Roth in his 95th television appearance. Fourth time in the Firestone TV Finals. I've never seen Mark Roth so psyched for a tournament. Uh, this is the one he wants to win more than anything, Chris. I think he can feel that the better years of his career are behind him. He's still a top star, and he wants this one right now. And the gleaming bowling ball, not quite into the pocket, leaving the seven pin. A profile replay of Mark Ross' shot. Very similar to the Mark uh, to Pete Weber. He has the high backswing. He's cut it down a little bit in the last few years. It used to be way above his head. Now only shoulder high, the open hand, and obviously that tremendous wrist action, the first player to really initiate that type of action on the professional bowlers tour. So the bowler of the year four times, high average five times, is marked with a spare in the first frame. 35 years old. Mark Roth, two years ago, the critics, after he had gone some a few tournaments without cashing, said he was over the hill. Roth answered with his first major win, a win at the U.S. Open. Uh, they don't say that much to him anymore. This is one of the greatest natural talents ever to step on a bowling lane. It's Roth, second frame. Again, a light hit, and this time leaving the two sleeper eight on the left lane. Mark Roth trying to play right around the second arrow. Watch as he loses the ball at the bottom of his swing, something you don't see happen to Roth very often. He's up quickly the line. He loses the ball off the hand right over the second arrow and doesn't get enough spin and hook to bring the ball back for a very, very difficult 2-8 conversion. Okay, two spares for Mark Roth to finish the number three spot out of a field of 52. Here is Pete Weber who finished fifth, but he's here now against Roth with his 231 to 205 win over Mike Albee. A little side story, you see that glove that Pete Weber has on, he likes it, uh, he says it helps his lift. He gave one to Mark Roth's daughter, Stephanie, to help her with her bowling when she was just two years old. just slid right on through, leaving the one, two, eight. You know, people say there is no defense in the sport of bowling, but there's some psychology. When you have two heavyweights going against each other, there's a mutual respect as you see Pete Weber's ball just sliding by. Obviously, his worst shot of the day leads the one, two, eight. And when you bowl against a Roth or a Weber or an Anthony or a Holman, you don't, you're not quite as loose as you'd normally be, and it has an effect on everybody's game. <laughs> Strike and a spare for Pete Weber. His dad, Dick, and his mother, Juanita, are back in Missouri watching. His dad, Dick, did compete in his 21st Firestone, finished 49th. And in the very first two Firestones, his dad, Dick, finished second behind Billy Hardwick and in 1966, Wayne Zahn. So he's trying to uh, get this one for the Weber family. Almost another 2-8, leaving only the two. Pete Weber a little bit disturbed by somebody dropping something in the stands as you see the ball sliding by, very similar to what happened to Mark Roth. Pete gets a little better break, knocking out the eight pin from behind, a simple spare. And that'll be something to watch because this is his fifth TV appearance this year. Gives a long, hard look to someone in the audience. And in his previous four, though, he was easily upset, and it affected his game, so we'll watch. Here's Mark Roth now with a spare up in the third. And there he goes, jumping on it. Pete McCordick with his perfect game this year, which made our year. Del Ballard with the U.S. Open 100 grand, and Pete Weber worked hard 
to get 99,000. 55 was which second in the U.S. Open. And then the rest of the field? This is the position they came in. Uh, Murdershaw 30th, Albius 31st, Roth 34th. And Trask struggling this year, but he's in second place. Interestingly enough, Chris, the one in three money winners did not even win a title this year. 4-7 for Roth. Speaking with the players before the championship round, I asked Mark which lane hooked a little bit more. He said the left lane, a half a board, and it showed up right there. The difference between a solid strike and a fast, what we call 4-7 spare, is the two pin just accelerating around the four pin. Roth that time not adjusting that, just a half a board. Sometimes the difference between a strike and an easy spare. Sometimes when that says a lot. Two, four, five for Roth on the left lane. Roth making an adjustment for the high hit on the left hand lane. Moves his feet over a couple of boards instead of just a half a board or a board. And it's that close sometimes. Leaves a 2-4-5. Watch his technique at shooting this spear. He is the best. A cross lane kills the ball a lot of speed. I saw a graphic there where Mark was the second to earn a million dollars on the tour. And there you see Jackie and Stephanie, the skater. Is that another Peggy Fleming or JoJo Starbuck? We hope so. Two for two, not bad in competition, Bo. I think you're right, Chris. I think she saw herself on television, a very astute and acute young lady. Now, Pete Weber leads this match by five pins, six frames, spare up. Well, there it is, the seven again. Pin action very similar to what we saw from Mark Roth as Pete Weber quickly steps up on the approach. The ball drives through, knocks the five pin over. See the head pin over, come over and interfere with the five pin. Pete with a second ball, a spear ball, easy conversion. Okay, Pete Weber, fifth TV appearance. He was second twice. He was third in Kansas City, second in Tacoma, and at Joe Kelly's showboat in Las Vegas. Pete, who still bowls on a league team in the St. Louis area with his brothers John and Dick Weber Jr. and his daddy. Quite a formidable team in the what they call the Masters League in St. Louis. Rolled his first perfect game at the age of 12. Has 27 others to his credit. A total of 28. The record 29. He liked that. Eighth frame Mark Ross. And again, a 10 pin. As we're running behind our allotted time schedule, uh, we bolt.